Sign Stealer is out on Netflix. Jack and I stayed up all night reviewing it, watching it, going back through the tape so you didn't have to unless you want to, which you probably probably do. But whether you watch it or not, give you our reaction. I'll let you know if it's worth even your time. Michigan football fan or not, I think there's uh, some good in it for any college football fan or anybody interested in the intricacies of the biggest story of college football of 2023. So, we're not sure if we learned anything new, but we are going to give you our take on this documentary. End of the show, though. Jack and I are going to give our final grades for Sign Stealer. So, if anything, if you don't want to watch the entire thing, the entire reaction, go to the end. Let's see. You can check out our grades. Let us know what you think of it once you watch it. Come back if you have to. It is the Sign Stealer Netflix documentary instant reaction from myself and Jack Lauderay, a.k.a. Young Harbaugh. All coming up right now. Let me know, are you guys going to already have you right now? It's uh, Tuesday afternoon. Have you watched it? Do you plan to watch it tonight, later on this week, this weekend? Either way, if it's uh, planning or you have, give me a yes down in the comments. If not going to watch it at all, haven't watched it, not going to watch it, go down and give me a no. But what did we learn from this documentary from Connor Stallions? We're going to break down our five biggest instant reactions, and we're just going to kind of riff Jack and I on just what we took away from what I think a lot of Ohio State – and Penn State and Michigan State scumbag fans thought we're just going to be, you know, the end of Michigan football. Stallion's going to tell all. Michigan's going to get suspended, vacated records. No, 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 no. It wasn't any of that. Before we do, remind you guys one more time, 78,000 Michigan football fans can't be wrong. Go to Facebook.com slash Harbaugh Go Blue. Zuckerberg, text me back. Let's change the URL. They won't let us change the URL for some reason, but that remains to be it. Uh, down in the comments, down in the description. I actually put it, Jack, in the end of the first paragraph of today's YouTube description. It's there. Click on it and uh, follow the Michigan Football Report's Facebook page today. First thing, and I think this is pretty evident from the start, Jack, Connor Science is every employer's dream, all right? The guy was working for free in college for Navy football. Then he was, you know, going to football coaching camps, pulling, you know, Michigan coach to decide, hey, can I do anything for the program? Can I do anything for the program? Had a full-time job after going to the Naval Academy with the Marines, yet was to be able to save money to fly to Michigan games and work as an unpaid assistant before he got a job. He was sleeping in his car. He was airbnb in his place out to save money. And I think this whole thing, oh, Harbaugh must have been funding it. This guy must have been funding it. This is just a guy who wanted to get ahead in life. Jack, I don't know. What do you think about Stallions as an employee or a potential employee? So my first note that I took, and I got a whole list of notes in our doc. My first note, Stallions is a guy that loves football and loves Michigan. Absolutely. He was hyper-focused on doing everything he could to help Michigan win. That was kind of the through line of this entire documentary. He wanted Michigan to win, and we saw that at the end when he was at the national championship and he shed a single tear. Incredible acting from him. Jack, as you know, we were a table over from Stallions the night of the national championship game, and he wasn't even in disguise at this point uh, like he was, which he revealed at the Ohio State game. Hardest working guy in football, Mr. Dedication. I mentioned it a second ago. After he graduated from the Naval Academy, was working full time as now a U.S. Marine, and was Airbnb out his place. So in going to a uh, truck stop with truckers, probably drugs and hookers going around there, sleeping in his car so he could afford money to fly to the next week's Michigan game to help out the program. And literally, Jack. I don't know if you kind of took away this, but they showed a bunch of videos of him as a little kid. It kind of reminds me of some of the stuff I went through as a kid with my own son now of like putting him in the Michigan football jersey, tossing the ball, singing, saying go blue, dressing up as Bo Schembechler for, uh, for Halloween. Um, I hope my son goes through those lengths to accomplish his dreams, right? Whether or not he was doing it for his parents, I don't know. I mean, a lot of times when your parents push something to you, push something to you, you actually, if you really are interested in it, you become more dedicated to that thing than even they were. So um, I think that a lot of people can see why he was motivated to get ahead in life, to get ahead when it comes to Michigan football, and you know, hopefully get to his dream of becoming Michigan head football coach, which I don't think unfortunately happens for him at this time. Number two. Well, he helped Navy win football games, right? I'm not sure other than, you know, the 
people filming at games, which there was a lot of dodginess about in this entire documentary, whether or not there was anything he was doing at Michigan that was different than what he did at Navy as an undergrad, right? So I was there from 2014 to 2017. And what was most interesting to me, Jack, is how he got the job. He walks in first day uh, as a Naval Academy, uh, you know, as a cadet student, one of the toughest colleges to get into in all of uh, – United States of America, you've got to be recommended by a congressman or a senator, right? Goes into the football coach's office, hey, I like a job, I want to help out, what can I do? Walks him over to the offensive coordinator's job and said, well, what can I do? And he's like, well, you can, you know, decipher signs from the other team. And sure enough, a couple weeks later, they were within a couple touchdowns of upsetting an Ohio State team that went on to win the national championship. Stallion said it was the best four-year run when he was there in Navy football history. I fact-checked that. It's not really true. They've had much better runs, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago. And even more recently, they've had a couple of 10 win stretches back to back. But a very good run, most notably, drops off 3 and 10 of the season after him. They went like 11 and 2 in 2019 after that. And then they're back to like 2 and 10 in 2020, I think it was, which is like, maybe that's the COVID year, maybe it was 2021. But uh, two of the three years after he left, Navy kind of fell off a cliff. So I think Science certainly has some sort of, uh, you know, magic touch. So, he made some quotes. We'll talk about this one, right? He said, I never advanced scouted. Two, if this is about signals uh, in the same way other teams do this, he watched TV copies and he took intel he got from other teams, amongst other things. I think Counter Stallions is, in a lot of ways, just a really hardworking guy. Um, I'd love to see the Michigan Manifesto. I would pay $10,000 cash to you. Counter Stallions, you watch this right now. You follow me on Twitter. We follow each other for a while. Uh, DM me. I will pay you ten thousand dollars. And the uh, the day of the the day after the Michigan Texas game in two weeks, I will come to your house and we will review the Michigan manifesto. And I'll give you ten thousand dollars cash money to take that entire thing because that's the most intriguing thing I've ever seen in my life, Jack. The amount, you know. Last 10 years where every single NFL draft pick, where they came from, where they went, first round. It was just, it was absolutely amazing, right? I absolutely loved it. And uh, I came away from this thinking that not only Connor Stanley's a hard worker, but he is a wildly intelligent guy. Uh, being that he's a Marine, being that he went to the Naval Academy, if uh, you support Connor Stanley's, that means you support the troops. Give me a USA down in the comments. If you're not commenting USA, um, we're going to have to block you from the channel. I'm going to get an entire list of people who watch the video, entire list of people who commented USA. If your name's not on there, you're clearly some sort of Russian uh, operative trying to uh, you know, come on our channel. You're a bot because everyone should support the troops. Now, he said he went to the Naval Academy to become a football coach. And he said, like, 15 or what was the number, like 12, 13, 14, like the top 20 coaches of all time. It was like not just football, Mike Krzyzewski and Bob Knight and, you know, Bo Schembecker, Woody Hayes, etc. They all had a military background. So he said, okay, cool. I can go to the military, uh, go to the Naval Academy, get that experience. Looks great on my resume. And then I can use that to open up doors to get me into the world of football. So I thought it was uh, pretty riveting. I certainly thought that uh, he had a, a good, you know, idea. It's certainly more than most 15, 16, 17 year old high school kids would think that far out into the future, like uh, Connor Stallion said. And you see that quote along the bottom, right? The great book, uh, Sun Tzu, isn't that the, uh, the, the, the ancient Japanese philosopher, whatever it was? Uh, the art of war, right? Just doing more things, using your opponent's strengths against them, right? Taking their strengths and turning them into weaknesses. And that's what Stallion's did, which he talked about starting at the Naval Academy. Now, what can a team do versus a cannon do, right? They went over this very clearly. And the only question mark was, can can you use friends to send you videos to games? And it was just a question mark, right? It's why I don't think that Michigan's going to get the hammer like my guy Kirk Barton, like Justin Spiro. The hammer's coming down on them. It's this little tiny little little hammer, right? That's all that's going to happen. You might see Sean Moore get a two-game suspension if uh, you know anything comes out of his text messaging with Stallions that could be you know impermissible in any single regard. But that's what teams can do. That's what they can't do. I'm not sure that this proved that Stallions did anything that we didn't already know. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel it is youtube.com slash michigan tv right below the video hit that subscribe button if you watch this for the first time if you watch this in the past you haven't subscribed now is the time michigan plays football in one two three four days from now and of course last but not least if you've subscribed in the past send the link to your friends your text chats your facebook groups etc to subscribe to the michigan football report for the 2024 season look i came away from this jack i think um I'm not sure I believe that anything differently. Uh, it maybe only cemented that 
I don't know if Harbaugh was involved in anything. I think he was, you know, with a, a company has got 100 plus employees or an organization like Michigan football did. Stadiums is kind of low man in the totem pole and was helping his bosses who were, you know, the position coaches and the coordinators do their jobs better. I don't think Harbaugh really, you know, got into the weeds. I certainly don't think that Jim Harbaugh is a guy, you know, going in and, you know, checking out, uh, you know, Dropbox folders and Google Drive folders that, you know, that Stallions was sharing with other people. So, I don't know if any rules are broken necessarily, and we're going to talk about more. We've got number three, four, five of our five biggest takeaways, plus Jack and Mai's, mine's grade of this uh, Counter Science documentary, Science Dealers, in a moment. But first, a word from our sponsor. Football season is here, and for me, that means longer days at the office and less time at home to prepare meals. Thankfully, I've got today's sponsor, Factor, to help keep me full, even on game days. Fuel up with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals in time for the football season. Thanks to the menu of chef crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So, no matter how busy you are, you always have time to enjoy new nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore with Factor. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose some six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well balanced. Keep the kitchen time to a minimum. Factor meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Head to factormeals.com slash michiganchat50 and use code Michigan Chat 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code Michigan Chat 50 at factormeals.com slash Michigan Chat 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is still active. Factor Meals is awesome. What wasn't awesome when Jack and I watched this is the brutal lineup of guests and interviews they had tell the story of Connor Stallions, right? Stallions himself was good. Uh, I think his parents are good. His lawyer was definitely kind of a slippery looking, uh, slippery sounding fella, but the amount of the media people they chose, right? Isaiah Hull covered up for a pedophile, Alex Jude, right? We, we, you saw that on my Twitter last fall. Um, and in general is the least charismatic guy I've ever seen on camera in my life, at least in the top five. Uh, Nicole Auerbach tried to get the 2020, college football season canceled was a mouthpiece for the Big Ten Network. Why is she telling this story, right? She was, uh, she's not respected, I don't believe. Um, she certainly isn't, uh, isn't a great storyteller by any means. Uh, Portnoy is in there. He was actually entertaining. I think kind of gave the media slash fan style thing. And then who the hell is this guy, Jack? Tony Paul of the T Detroit News was like the most shown media member. Kind of told the story as like the narrator in a lot of ways other than Stallions himself. Who the hell is this guy? I've never even heard him. I've never even seen his content. That's the guy you choose. I just didn't think it was a good representation of who the media was at all. Jack, your takeaways. You're not even mentioning, I think, probably my least favorite interview of the entire was the Washington Post guy. Oh, he Ryan, was, Ryan Day's was, co uh, was, college buddy, he, right? He seemed so shady that they did an entire section of the documentary about how he went to school at the same time as Ryan Day, and he's like, oh, I didn't even know Ryan I didn't Day. even know about that. This is news to me. I don't know about that one, Jim. Give me a break. I mean, it's just it was a very slimy uh, in regards. And then we're going to talk about maybe the worst representation of a person of a fan base, of a group of people maybe I've ever seen here in a second. But I want to get your take. What is your takeaway from Connor Stallions, from everything you've known since he has been part of the college football you know, universe over the past, what, nine, ten months of this? So is he a hero? Give me an H down the comments of hero. Or he is he a zero? And he's a total schmuck and you know stained the sanctity of Michigan football. Give me an H or a Z. I'm going with hero, but that is uh, for you guys to decide down in the comments. So this came up, and this just enforced every stereotype in the history of, you know, guy in his mom's basement or blogger or message board guy. They had one Ohio State fan who was, you know, bing, 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 bing on the internet, you know, trying to get, take stallions down. This guy right here calls himself Brohio, was five foot six, maybe 103 pounds, dripping wet, a 38-year-old man, it seemed like, from kind of the side profile and just his voice inflection wearing a full mask and a hat and these sunglasses so you couldn't reveal his identity in the side shots that showed it was literally a basement with a little bit of light on him. He's like, ooh, yeah, I'm going to get you on 11 Warriors message board. Has 
Have message board stereotypes ever been validated more than showing this slippery guy who probably is working the overnight shift at uh, a truck stop gas station? You know, just uh, Michigan cheats, Michigan cheats in the history of the world. This is comical. Um, it makes anyone who's ever been in a message board look terrible. And I think in general, it shows you exactly who Ohio State fans are. When someone says the hammer's coming down, sorry, Kirk Barton, sorry, Justin Spiro, these are the people who you're, uh, you know, who are, who are liking your tweet saying that. This guy right here, this 106-pound, 38-year-old guy living in his mom basement, bro Ohio from 11 Warriors, that's the schmuck that you are placating to and that thinks the hammer's coming down on Michigan football. Ohio State football fans all wrapped up in one guy, bro Ohio, that's your guy. What never ends for us, though, is the push to be beat Ohio State again. The greatest political slogan in history. We started 2020. The game was canceled. Thanks, Fauci. 2021, win. 2022, win. 2023, win. National championship. Join me down in the comments. Bosa, it's no longer an Ohio State thing since 2020. It is a Michigan football thing. Beat Ohio State Again, join me in the comments. Every single show you should be commenting, Bosa. But today, because of schmucks like Bro Ohio, even more important. A lot of lying, Jack. A lot of lying was permitted in this documentary. Um, I want to hit this quote, though, before we go into the depths of lying, right? So Dan Wetzel, again, no charisma. The, the media members they picked, I'm just not sure. They should have had me on there. I'm not sure why they didn't. But every team has a guy who's in charge of sign stealing. And it's a subculture of college football. It's worth remembering, yada, yada. You're allowed to steal signs is basically the takeaway that I had from that one. So you get some truth in there. There was a lot of lies in the media back in October, back in November, back in January of the past 12 months. But this is the most egregious one right here. Steins, they printed the photo out. They put it up to his face. And he said, right, he's getting paid for this, clearly. He's telling his side of the story. Why invalidate all the things that you said were probably true by telling such an obvious lie? He's like, that doesn't look like me. That doesn't look like me at all. And then later on, they showed, which I'm guessing they filmed it themselves when he did an NCAA uh, video in April, did a deposition with the NCAA. They asked him about the Central Michigan-Michigan State game, which clearly him. And what he said is, I don't recall being at a Central Michigan game. You, were you there? What do you mean you don't recall? Were you there, weren't you? I don't recall it. Come on, man. I mean, just say I don't want to answer that or something like that. And then Portnoy comes on and he's like, was that Stallions? Yeah, it was Stallions. He told me it was him himself. So, I mean, if you're going to tell Dave Portnoy and he's going to out you on Netflix in front of the entire country, maybe don't be so dodgy in the NCAA. Maybe don't be so dodgy when they put the picture up and you hold up to your face. Because I think it, in some people it's going to invalidate, well, Stallions is just a liar because if you lie about this thing, that's so obvious. What else are you going to uh, lie about? Now, they talked a lot about you know him buying to college football fans and tickets. Now, my tweet went viral back in October, November of last year saying it's pretty clear that Connor Stallions is buying uh, you know tickets to send friends and maybe family members who are veterans right, of the military uh, tickets to send them to college football games. Maybe they couldn't afford it or otherwise. They showed a clip of Pat McAfee literally the same day that I put that tweet out you know, putting that same thing out. So clearly someone from McAfee's show either sent it to him or he saw it himself. Stallion said, well, well, I gave my tickets to my mom. Was she helping me scout Purdue? Was she helping me scout Michigan State and other things? I gave tickets to my dad. My buddy and my dad went to different games, Ohio State or Nebraska or Purdue. Uh, in general, I think the whole, I guess, thing that I wish they would have went into more on this is who was getting the tickets? We're, you know, did, why, why did we not speak to any of those people? Right? Remember Washington Post, they did the whole expose in late October, early November of, hey, this low-lever D3 staffer said that Stallions sent him money and Stallions paid for him to go to the game and Stallions sent him tickets, etc. Why was that guy not interviewed, right? The Washington Post was able to interview him. Why was that guy not on there? If it was this vast network, how could Netflix put all this money into this documentary and the marketing unit, etc., and not get a single person they claim to go to a game on Connor Stallion's dime on Uncle T's dime to come and talk about it I think it was a big miss from uh, from this documentary overall now in general it's pretty clear to me from everything we've known over the last 10 months that Central Michigan brought Stallions, right? Jim McElwain and quite a few of the staffers on Central Michigan staff last year were all Michigan staffers in 2018 and 2019 and you know maybe a couple of mid to 2020. McElwain left Michigan as the receiver coach, went to Central Michigan to become the head coach. I think it's pretty clear. They knew they knew he had something going on, knew he had Scott at Michigan State, and he could be on the sideline giving them the signs like he said he would. 
and it might turn out that Central Michigan gets the biggest penalty of all. You know, Michigan, Mich- you know, Central Michigan, Harbaugh, anybody else. I think Central Michigan, when all things come down to it, is going to have a lot of egg in their face that they let a Michigan football staffer, uh, low-level staffer, on the sidelines giving them uh, signs for the uh, Michigan State offense and defense and have categorically lied about it uh, you know, since it was outed last October. A lot of other things were off, right? They kind of said, oh, Stallions went to a Michigan game, you know, th- thing, a coaching camp right after Jim Harbaugh got the job, a coaching camp with John Harbaugh and Jim Harbaugh. And he went up to Chris Partridge and said, hey, I love, how can I be involved with the team? I want to be a free volunteer. And then he was there the 2018 season after he graduated. Well, there's a big three-year gap between Jim Harbaugh being hired at the beginning of the 2015 season as the coach to the 2018 season. So they kind of just jumped ahead magically and left out the entire next three years while he was still a student at Navy. Other thing, they jumped ahead to the 2021 season. Okay, Michigan makes their big comeback after the bad COVID year, and they show Harbaugh 2021 season. He's rocking Adidas. He's rocking Adidas on his hat. Well, everybody knows that Michigan became a Jordan school in 2016. So, like, why use an outdated photo at that year time? Six years outdated to be a uh, you know to tell the story of Michigan and Connor Stallions. Stallions went on and they talked about the Uncle T thing, which again. I don't know if Stallions is lying, but he seemed to be a little dodgy about this, saying the whole Uncle T thing, quite frankly, I've never heard the phrase Uncle T. I think he's misguiding us. I think that is not factually accurate. Um, You know, my middle initial is T-Jack. People have said, Yoder, are you Uncle T? I still am not denying it. But they didn't go into the unknown as deep as they could. What I want to know is, do they have a smoking gun? Are there people willing to come forward for money, right, from Netflix to talk about the fact that Stallions sent them tickets, paid for their transportation, paid them money to film games? And then do you remember this one thing, Jack? This is actually the most uh, egregious part of the entire part, right? He said that, remember his buddy with the bad teeth, right? The guy who said that everyone was making fun of his teeth so he got braces just to shut up the haters. Said, oh yeah, I was recording some things on my phone and someone said to me, hey, you better not record too much. A a random fan. You better not record too much because people might think you're recording the other team. Oh, and then me and Connor thought, what if we could do that? Was that an obvious lie? Do you remember what I'm talking about when his friend said that? Yeah, I, the way I interpreted it was he went there and he had no idea, and then he was like, oh, yeah, of course, we won't do that, we won't do that, we won't do that. And but then, what kind of fans would say that? No fans would ever say that. I don't know. It just seems kind of sketchy. It seemed like a way, like, may, say this so we can say, oh, that was the aha moment that brought all this about, which seemed to me so ridiculous that uh, I thought it was an obvious lie. Guys, a reminder, we are on Facebook, as I mentioned at the top of the show. Facebook.com slash Harbaugh Go Blue. The link is at the bottom of the first paragraph, also in the comments. Go follow us. 78,000 Michigan football fans cannot be wrong. And last but not least, I've said this a few times, we almost learned nothing from this documentary that we didn't already know. Um, I think Michigan football fans will enjoy it because it goes to the glory days, right? You see a lot of footage of Michigan winning games. Awesome. Cool. That's great. Uh, and the haters were coming in there thinking that, like, oh, Michigan's get the hammer put down and they're still going to hate. No one's going to change their mind. Nothing's going to be different uh, in the future. And really, I don't think anyone really learned anything that we didn't already know. Jack, your take. Yeah, I mean, I think we all kind of, and like you kind of already said, I saw a lot of chatter about how, oh, this is it. Final nail in the coffin. Michigan did the cheating, did the line. And that's just not what it was. Yeah. And I think all the haters, they must be fuming. They're, they're still, they're still going to hate Michigan. Yeah. Like, like they're still going to say Stallions cheated this, that, the other thing, but it, there was no final nail, big bombshell that came out. That's going to take Michigan and give Michigan the death penalty. That's just not going to happen. So I think people are fuming over this. The haters are, but we didn't really learn much. And I think people are going to be pissed about that if they're haters. And what they, I think alluded to make sure we go to that one. Next, Jack, we've got all the, uh, all the takes on there is, um, the one thing that they said, Dan Wetzel and others, like, look, everyone's got this involved. Michigan just did it better. There's nothing that came out that proved or showed anyone who was willing to come forward for money or otherwise or spite that uh, said that Michigan broke the rules. And even if his friends did that, there was still a question mark. It's up to interpretation, which is why you know they've changed the rules for Connor Stallions, right? Michigan, you're not allowed to permit uh, one player on offense, one player on defense can speak to the coaching staff. So there's no more of a you know Scott Van Pelt and a picture of uh, whoever up on a big whiteboard to call signs into a game. I think my final word on this is Stallions is not a bad guy. Um, 
he should have been a less, a little bit less coy, uh, a little bit less dodgy on the two things that were obvious to everybody. Were you on the sideline of Central Michigan? Just say, hey, look, uh, that's still an ongoing investigation. I don't want to talk about it right now. I'm just going to say no comment. And, well, clearly there was tickets bought for people. Clearly people went to games. So what's the story there? Because it wasn't just your mom and your dad and your buddy. There were plenty of Venmo transactions that people screenshotted before you made it private. Either talk about it. Or say, I'm not going to talk about that now because of X. But don't act like it didn't happen because we all saw that it happened. Our grades up on Science Dealers, the Netflix documentary. Jack, you first. Yeah, I give it 77 out of 100. I think it's a very serviceable sports documentary. I think if people have no idea what this story is, they do a good job at laying it out. But for the sports fans you're kind of rehashing everything we already know, kind of like you already said. We did not learn anything new here. There's no big bombshells. I don't think they did a really great job bringing in good interviews in general, not even just the media, but like you were talking about, they didn't really bring in anyone of mm -hmm. substance other than Stallions. Yeah. Like, you had Michael Barrett there, which was cool, but you didn't have, like, you didn't have Chris Partridge there. He could have been there. You didn't, obviously Harbaugh's not going to talk. Obviously Moore's not going to talk, but could have brought in Partridge. You could have brought in some of these low-level interns. Like, there are people that could have brought in that could have been more substantial interviews than just 14 different media members that are all just kind of saying the same the thing. The same so, exact thing, right? Yeah. yeah, so. I kind of agree with you. I, I, I gave it a little lower, Jack. I went with a 74.2 um, on the uh, JY365 scale. And the only thing I learned, which is the funny stuff, we learned that Stallions – kind of went full, like, you know, winter mask, sunglasses, and hoodie into the Ohio State game. He went full bro Ohio. Yeah, but we went full bro Ohio. Yeah, maybe that was – how about this? What if Stallions was bro Ohio in that video? Maybe he's just, like, kind of put this on, bro, rather. Um, he went to the Ohio State game. We know he went to the Rose Bowl. We Everyone saw that. But he went to the Ohio State game and then went onto the field after the game, charged the field, said what's up to Michael Barrett, which I thought was funny. The other one is confirming that the Portnoy stuff was real, which I think no one really believed. I thought they thought Portnoy was putting on a coy that he – he went and when Michigan, they were at Michigan for uh, the Barstool Sports Show, that he dropped off some notes for Portnoy and walked off. It was in the back of multiple that picture was, views. That was the best bit of the entire documentary was just confirming that it was actually, actually Stallings yeah. and all the videos and in things. The, I don't watch the pizza reviews, but in the back of mul multiple pizza reviews, they just walked like out three or four pizza. of them. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, so I thought it was good. I'll give it a C, right? That's a, that's a basic C right there for me. Uh, I think Michigan fans will enjoy it just because it's about Michigan. General college football fans, I think they'll be like, eh, that was okay. And uh, nevertheless, if you're a Michigan football fan, go ahead and watch it. Let me know what you guys think. Put your grades down in the comments when you do. And if you made it to the end of today's video, a little bit different, a review video. We haven't done one of these, I don't think, ever. Really, really Jack. Uh, so give me a like if you were real one and made it to the end of our Connor Stallions Sign Stealer Netflix, Netflix review. It's a two for Tuesday that we told you earlier, told you yesterday. Got Preston Yoder coming up on today's show later on uh, tonight. So you want to check that out. Till then, go blue.